from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering WTG Transform 2018. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE at WTG Transform 2018. Happy to welcome to the program two gentlemen from the Boston Architectural College. To my left is Carl Jasperson, who's the Systems Administrator, and to his left is Jason O'Brien, who's the Director of IT. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, so uh, Jason, why don't we start with you, help us power up uh, this conversation. Uh, t tell us a little bit about uh, the, 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 the college. So Boston Architectural College was started in the late 1800s. It's a small uh, design school, um, and we offer programs in landscape, interior, and traditional architecture. Yeah, uh, so I love that. Uh, t t talk to a little bit more about you know, the, the, the charter of, 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 the, of the school and how IT fits into that. So we, uh, we our mission at the school is to provide a, a excellent education to a diverse population. Um, technology factors in uh, is very important. Um, and over the last 10 years that Carl and I have been at the school, um, technology has, use has increased immensely. Our students are using it more and more every year. Um, and uh, meeting those needs has become, you know, difficult and uh, it's a challenge we, we strive to achieve every year. Yeah. Well, design thinking is, is so important these days. I, I studied engineering as an undergrad and wish I'd learned uh, more about design. One of my favorite authors who I happened to interview uh, about a month ago is Walter Isaacson. And, you know, the, the ones he studies are the ones that can take that design thinking and technology and bring them together. Carl, bring us up to speed on, uh, from, from an IT standpoint. You know, how big of a team do you have? What are you involved with? He said, uh, you know, things have been changing over the last few years. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got Jason. Um, in addition to running the department, he runs our online learning system. Um, I'm responsible for all the backend inf infrastructure, servers, networking, backup virtualization. We recently hired a junior systems administrator to help me out. We've got a web guy, we've got a DBA. The, the wood shop is under IT because we have a fabrication guy, so 3D printing, laser cutting. Um, we have uh, the help desk and the help desk manager who also does our purchasing and she and I will take escalations and so it's, uh, there's not a lot of crossover, you know, skill crossover in the group, but we managed to keep everything going. Yeah, but, but as you said, I mean, you know, woodworking, not something you th think of initially <laughs> yeah. as, yeah. you know, an IT thing. Uh, IT and OT are, you know, really converging a lot when you talk about manufacturing, as, you know, we talk about sensors and IoT, it's, it's hitting everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, for us, uh, you know, 3D printing and laser cutting, and we also have a CNC router, they all started as experiments at the school and have turned into a major uh, factor in uh, for our students. It's a resource that they demand. Uh, and the increasing use every single year and how we meet those demands um, is, is becoming tricky uh, to accomplish in our, you know, we're in, in the back bay, real estate's very expensive and uh, we have to make our space uh, do amazing things. Yeah, Jason, that's great points. I mean, I've, I've talked to lots of uh, higher education and even uh, you, you talked to the, the K2 through 12, it was, you know, well, mobility has had a huge impact, you know, therefore stresses and strains on wireless, um, you know, how do I get devices into the classroom? How do I manage it? Uh, I had a gentleman from BU who's here at the show. Last year we were talking a lot about MOOCs. Um, so, you know, it, it's that, that role of IT has been expanding, but um, luckily they're throwing way more money at you, I'm sure, more head count, it sounds like, so. Uh, uh, well, we've been flat head count over the last eight years. We lost someone last year and uh, gained someone this year. Um, so, you know, we, we basically have to do more with less every year, like most IT uh, departments. So, uh, you know, we've, we redesign our spaces periodically to meet the, our students' needs. Um, you know, and, and turn, we're turning uh, what was labs uh, just computer labs into more flexible space where students are uh, can move the tables around and you, the computers are available. Sometimes we have high-end Alienwares in a, in a cabinet they pull out and use or they can use it to make models. Uh, we have, they can put up uh, their uh, designs on a 3D TV. They're using VR headsets uh, to walk around their own designs. Uh, it's really fascinating uh, where the technology is okay. going. I, I wish we could spend more time on the Alienware <laughs> yeah. and VR stuff and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, our production crews, gamers, my, my yeah. son's into this stuff. 
but but Carl, I, I'm hearing things like uh, space constraint. We need to do more with less. We need to simplify this environment. Uh, wow, that seems like a really good setup for kind of infrastructure modernization. So, uh, how, how long have you you guys been there? About ten years, ten right? Years, yeah. So things have changed a lot in, when, in, in, in ten years. So g walk us back ten years ago and give us that point when you went to modernize. Yeah, when when we started, um, there's no virtualization, three server racks in a room in the basement. Um, the 10 years that we've been there, there's been water in that room twice, so that, that always gave us the warm fuzzies. You're saying it wasn't water cooling? I mean, <laughs> no, we tried for that, but it didn't, you know, it didn't work out. Um, last year we moved to a colo facility in Somerville, so, um, and by the time we did that move, you know, we did, we started virtualization with uh, uh, VMware like 3.5 within a year or two of me starting, um, and the racks got, you know, less and less full and uh, now uh, in the fall we rolled out VX Rail, and we're in a single rack in a data center and there's I think three physical servers in that rack that aren't the VX Rail at this point. So it's, it's consolidation, power savings, stuff's in a much better physical location than it used to be. Moving that server room out, we were able to free up that space for you know, the students to be able to have, it's a, it's a meditation space now. Um, so it's uh, it, it's been really interesting, kind of going through all that. Great. What 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 did you know? We don't have a ton of time, but let's let's talk about that VX Rail. Um, was your team? Were you looking for HCI? Was it you know just time for a server refresh? You know what what kind of led to that? Was there a specific application that you started with? So. Um, this event two years ago, we saw Brian from BU give his presentation on Nutanix, yep. and that really turned us on to the whole um, hyperconverged uh, option. We uh, we worked with Winslow. We actually talked to another vendor, and um, we looked at Nutanix. We looked at Pivot Three. We looked at rolling our own you know vSAN on FX2, and um, after kind of comparing everything and seeing the pros and cons, VX Rail made the most sense from a management perspective and a price perspective. Um, our old cluster was coming up on the five-year mark. Things were going out of warranty. We had uh, uh, Equalogic SAN with uh, 7,200 RPM drives, one gig iSCSI, so it was slow. For most of its life, we were just doing lightweight servers and applications. Two years ago, we needed to virtualize our database server, and we threw Pernix in there with 800 gig NVMe drives, and that was a great stopgap. Um, but yeah, you know, we we needed something more permanent, more robust, and that's how we got to the XRail. From a management standpoint, the hyperconverged model um, gave us more flexibility. It's easier to expand, uh, and since we're small, we're not talking about you know, racks and racks working together. We, we started with just three hosts. Um, so from a overview standpoint, it's easy for us as we grow to just add another node. And we get the compute, we get the storage, and we get the memory all at once uh, as an expansion. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, the model is just fantastic for our workload um, that we put on it. We've got like 70 servers in there. Um, the only stuff that's not in there yet is our student file server okay. and uh, Exchange. And okay. they're going in there in the they're, next six months. Yeah. So. yeah. Good, great. And that's, so so it, it sounds like you're real happy with the solution. Uh, you've been with Dell for, for years. So yeah. um, f from an operation standpoint, was there you know a, a steep learning curve, or was this pretty straightforward and very easy? I mean, I was, I was already really familiar with uh, the VMware piece going into this. Um, so that, you know, that wasn't a big deal. We were already on vSphere 6, and we started in VxRail with vSphere 6. Uh, VxRail Manager is it's kind of a stupid, easy interface. You know, you can go in, you can see, are there alerts? Is there an update? You know, can it see my hardware? Is all that good? There's not a whole lot to learn from there. If we were doing vSAN on our own, my understanding is that's a lot more complicated to stand up. Um, once you have it going, you're good until you try to make a change. Um, the, so the VX Rail Manager extract, abstracts all that away and just kind of gives you the, the VMware experience that you're used to. Yeah, uh, any commentary on the economics so, of this? Yeah. Um, we actually found, it was very interesting because our original assessment of our own needs were there was no way we could afford all flash. 
um, and we started. We focused exclusively on hybrid solutions. Um, and after a certain point, we saw I think uh, a d uh, presentation from Rick on VxRail platform, and we saw uh, that VxRail does inline dedupe and compression with the all flash. And we thought, wait, maybe we could make this work um, with all flash. And so we actually had a very slight reduction in raw storage in our new platform, but the percentage that we're actually consuming is far less than on our old platform simply because of those gains. Um, and it is, the performance is far, far faster, um, and it's a, we've just been very pleased with the implementation of it. Um, from a cost perspective, uh, the all-flash VX rail came in under the hybrid Pivot 3 and the hybrid Nutanix uh, products. Uh, so, you know, we, it was a huge win from that perspective. Uh, we were shocked we could, we'd be able to do it, uh, thrilled with it. Okay, uh, either of you, uh, final word, it sounds like you're real happy with the solution, w went in smoothly, operates well, economics were good. Uh, what, what, what final takeaways would you give for your peers? I mean, I'd say the implementation was, you know, the VxRail platform, the, the installation is as advertised. It was, it's basically a wizard that walks you through the installation process. The very few minor issues we encountered, um, the Winslow team and uh, the uh, uh, ES EMC, EMC Dell uh, support. support people had no problem solving for us. It was uh, really a pretty easy migration to the new platform, and we were able to do it with essentially zero downtime. Yeah. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining. Uh, the, the, the promise is to get that easy button for IT. Yeah. HCI definitely helping to move in that direction. Next time we'll get to talk a little bit more about uh, cloud and everything like that. Uh, be back with lots more coverage here from WTG Transform 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.